Hi all, it's Teresa in Gemma's house. So in this video, I'm going to finish my couch quilt that I started in my last video, making it out of old pillow shams that I hadn't been using for a long time and decided I probably never would. So they're all quilted with batting in them. So no sense having them go to waste. I made a couch quilt out of them with some old blue jeans that I hadn't been wearing lately either. So I'm going to finish it up with a flannel backing and some binding that I made out of the fabric that was on the back of one of those pillow shams. This didn't cost me any extra money. I had all of these in my stash and it's really fun to do a quilt like this. Okay, so I just measured this nice piece of flannel and it's a little bit more than three yards. And I want to do the math to see if I can use this as a backing for my quilt. It was a remnant piece of fabric. It didn't cost much at all. And I love deer and wooded scenery. So this, I just couldn't pass up. I think it's very pretty. So I'm going to measure and see if I can piece this. Okay, so for those of you who don't like math, <laughs> I'm a person who is very visual, so I usually have to graph out measurements so I can see it visually to be able to tell if my backing fabric will be enough for the size of my quilt. So what I did is I used four inches um, for each square. I took the measurement of the piece of flannel I have, which is 112 inches long, and how wide it was, the usable width is 42 inches. So I graphed out the size of the quilt, which is 72 inches long and 53 inches wide. So now I can see the difference between the size of my flannel piece and the size of the quilt. So this right here, two of these squares, since they're four inches each, that's eight. Two here, 10, and one inch here, that's 11, 11 inches. So I can see that I have plenty of width left here, 42 inches. So if I mark off 11 inches, I have the length of the quilt, which is 72 inches. And I subtracted that from the length of my flannel piece, which is 112 inches. So this is 40 inches here. So I need two 40 inch pieces to piece in here. So I drew out 11 inches wide, two widths. This piece would be pieced here, and this other piece would be pieced on top of it. So I'll cut my flannel piece then and piece it together. And then what I'm going to do is quilt this in long straight lines along the borders of these blocks and then I'll put my binding on and it will be finished. So I think that's a pretty quick quilt. Okay, so I often use my large dining room table to put the quilt top onto the backing fabric like I did here. And I put a few pins in here already, but what I usually do is I lay it, the quilt top, on the backing fabric and make sure it's a little bit down from the top here and then I pull it over the edge of the table like this and it's a good way to make sure that there aren't any ripples in the backing fabric underneath and that they are fitting together well which they are. See, it's really close. <laughs> and then I start adding my pins on the top. 
about every eight inches these are. And I use these nice curved quilting pins. I got them on Amazon and they work really well to keep everything together and they're easy to insert too. So when I get this pinned on, I'm going to quilt along the border with straight lines, kind of in the seam. And then I'll see if I want to free motion quilt on these blue jean pieces along all the edges. Okay, so my walking foot made short work out of attaching the backing flannel fabric to the front. And it worked out really nicely, no buckles or ripples or anything, so that was lucky. So I did decide to free motion quilt on these denim pieces along the outside edges. I did want them to have some quilting too, so that when I wash this piece, I'll get that nice scrunchy look on all of the pieces. So this is my binding that I cut from the fabric that was on the other side of one of those quilted pillow shams. I cut it in two inch strips and I had to piece it a lot because I had already cut that fabric. So I had to cut two inch strips out of those triangles and I was able to just piece it together but it did take a lot of piecing. So I ended up with 255 inches of this binding. It's gonna be a very thin binding, but that's okay. And I measured all the sides of my quilt and it's 232 inches. So it should work. And if you have a baby lock jazz too, you can attach this little piece that they give you with the machine to the bobbin thread spool. And then you can use a larger spool of thread. I always sew my binding to the back side of the quilt first, and then I iron it up so it's nice and flat because then I'll be turning this to the front side and then top stitching it. So I want it to be nice and flat. Okay, so this is not a 90 degree angle like you usually have on a rectangular shaped quilt. This is uh, actually easier to deal with. So when I was sewing this binding on, I sewed up to a quarter inch away from the new side, pivoted the needle, placed the binding along the new side, and continued stitching. So I have this kind of rounded corner. So now as I'm top stitching this, I'll stop a few inches away from the corner and holding down that corner, I'll pull the binding up and make sure the binding is overlapping. And then I'll continue stitching and get a couple stitches in this part to hold it in place, and then I'll pivot my needle and continue sewing. Okay, so I caught a stitch in that side, and I'm going to back stitch on it a couple times to keep it in place. Pivot my needle, and continue. 
continue sewing, but I always backstitch in these corners too to reinforce them. Okay, so before I show you the finished quilt, I'm going to wash and dry it to get that nice scrunchy quilt texture. And because that has a lot of dark blue jean material, I'm going to include two of these Shout Color Catcher sheets. And they've worked for me before to catch any colors that run off of the fabric. And here we have it. It turned out great after I washed it and dried it. And everything held up really great. No colors ran at all. And the backing is so cozy. And it has a lot of personality, which is important in a quilt, right? Okay, so I'm really happy with my new quilt that didn't cost me a cent to make. And I hope this video gave you some new ideas for things that you can make too. And if you will please leave me a comment about your quilt experiences along these same lines, that would be great for the other viewers to read your comments as well. So we all share ideas, which is really fun. So thanks a lot for watching. And until next week, Bye-bye.